Hello, here I am once again with the Baker and Wolfer Crime Triangle article. Today I'm going to be discussing how to identify the data collection strategy. So if you think back to Maxfield and Babby, they discuss several different data collection strategies, such as surveys, field research, qualitative interviews, agency records, and content analysis. So one thing that you're going to want to do for the article critique project is identify the specific data collection strategy that was used in the study that you read. So I'm going to show you how to find that. And finding it is actually pretty easy. Really, the best way to find it is just to go down to the methods section. So I'm just going to scroll down to the methods section of the article here and see if we can find any clues about what the data collection strategy was. Okay, so methods. All right, the borough in which the data were collected has a higher pop proportion of elderly people. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's see, neighborhood watch volunteers trained in survey and interview techniques administered surveys in two waves, one prior to community-oriented policing in 1996, pre-assessment, and one six months after it was implemented in 1998, post-assessment. In the pre-assessment, participants were unaware of the cop strategies, blah, blah, blah. For both surveys, respondents were told the surveys were primarily used to gather anonymous information regarding citizen perceptions of the police. Each involved surveys of two random samples of people. So it really looks like they did surveys. And specifically, uh, it sounds like they had these volunteers trained in survey and interview techniques administer the surveys. So... I'm guessing this was some kind of face-to-face -face survey methodology. Let's just go down and see if there's anything else. So they talk about the sampling here, their treatment and control groups, pre and post assessment. Ah, here they talk about the research instrument. The research instrument was based on the validated survey of the Austin experiment both surveys contain 29 questions measuring several areas, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, basically, they did a survey here. All right. Um, and they used the survey to assess fear of crime in this community. And here they present all the results. And then here's the uh, survey questions. This is how they measured the variables that were of interest in their study. So the dependent variable here, fear of crime. Okay, fear of crime in the target and control groups. So these are the specific questions that were asked on the survey. And this is how they measured their variables. So fear of crime. Ah, it looks like they also incorporated some crime statistics as well. Let's see. So crime analysts reviewed reporting system, found 250 incomplete reports for 1996 to 1997. Let's see. Furthermore, due to the covert nature of the drug transaction and the hidden location, many of the offenses were underreported. Dark figure of underreported crime further compounded the problems associated with obtaining accurate data. So it looks like here they're talking about uh, maybe an attempt to get at some uh, crime statistics, some official statistics, but they talk about the fact that it was difficult because a lot of the offenses were probably underreported because, yeah, the, a lot of these were drug-related offenses. And if you remember, this particular uh, study was looking at a local park in uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, where teenagers were congregating and um, using drugs and alcohol and selling drugs and 
having sex in the restrooms and things of that nature. So a lot of that's going to be underreported. So I think this section really highlights the fact that crime statistics are not a great way to um, assess this problem. And so they did the survey. And here's just some more of their survey questions that they operationalized into dependent variables, um, asking specific victimization questions. And then uh, here's questions about if um, people witness the police intervention. So I regularly see police officers on patrol in the neighborhood, closed circuit TV surveillance in park, reduce my fear, new fence should improve crime prevention in the park. So again, these are probably things that they did as part of the uh, community policing or problem-oriented policing intervention in the park. And then they were asking these questions to see if people actually saw them. Uh, and saw these interventions uh, in place. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. They did a survey. It sounds like they did face-to-face -face surveys of people that lived uh, near the park that was the treatment group and then people that lived away from the park, which was the um, uh, control group or the comparison group, since this was a quasi-experiment. And they had questions in their survey about whether or not people saw the police intervention about victimization experiences and about fear of crime, okay? And these are the survey questions that they used uh, to create the uh, dependent variables in this case. And they also had some discussion about how they created their survey and why survey data was good for capturing some of these variables. So again, I found all this in the methods section. So you're going to want to pay attention to the methods section very carefully. Um, and then sometimes, too, they might even tell you in the abstract of the article how they collected data. Let's see. I don't think they do here, but we'll see. Um, let's see. This research illustrates the benefits of the police researcher partnership in preventing park crime in a suburban community. Parks can attract illegitimate users who engage in criminal activities. The park in this research project gained a reputation as a hotspot for alcohol, drug use, and vandalism. The social use of drugs and alcohol prompted the youthful, youthful offenders to target victims and engage in criminal behavior. A questionnaire evaluated the effects of problem-oriented policing intervention and prevention strategies. The general findings suggest that the problem-oriented policing paradigm and related crime prevention strategies reduce the level of fear, level and fear of crime in this community. Okay, so again, they just say here, a questionnaire evaluated the effects of problem-oriented policing intervention and prevention strategies. So once again, a questionnaire, just a fancy word for survey. So we can see in several places in this article, uh, in the method section as well in the abstract, that they mentioned the uh, survey that they administered. Um, so pretty easy to figure that out. One thing that I might just mention briefly is that depending on the study, sometimes there are multiple data collection strategies. So you might see, uh, and they did a little bit of that here, but not, not really in depth, but they talked about how they collected some official data and they also collected survey data, but they basically kind of used that to argue that the survey data would be a better way of assessing some of these problems, right? Because a lot of these problems are not going to be reported to the police. Um, but you might see in your study that maybe they collected survey data and then they use crime statistics, or maybe they collected survey data and they did field work. Um, and field observations, or maybe they did some qualitative interviews. So uh, you'll want to be careful about this because, you know, there may be multiple data collection strategies that are used. All right. So just something to be aware of. But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. It's pretty easy. Again, a lot of times you can find this information in the abstract or uh, straight off in the methods section. Um, obviously, as I always say, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to shoot me an email and I would be happy to address them.